So in the previous video I built this fat tire electric bike that can reach up to 50 km an hour and get around 50 km of range. This project took me quite a while to make because I had to clean each part of the bike, build a battery consisting of 70 lithium ion cells, connect them all together and install a battery management system board, assemble the mid-drive kit on the bike, create a few custom 3D printed mounts, fit each part and do a bit of programming on the controller for the best performance. With all this effort I was able to build this fat tire electric mountain bike that is really fun to ride. But how does it compare to a store bought e-bike like the Himaway Cruiser and is it worth building your own? The battery on my DIY e-bike is 52 volt and 16 amp hour with a total capacity of around 830 watt hours. When building this battery I installed a smart BMS board that can connect to your phone using an app to show the voltage of each cell, the battery temperature and many other parameters. While it is a bit more expensive compared to a standard BMS board, I find it incredibly useful to be able to check the life parameters of the battery using the app. This bike uses a Bafang mid-drive motor that is rated for 750 watts but after tuning the settings it can now reach just over 1200 watts. Using the mid-drive motor is just like riding a regular bike or a car with a manual gearbox. You have to switch gears for highest efficiency. To me this is the only drawback of this mid-drive motor because you have to constantly switch gears for smooth ride and acceleration. I have a 48 tooth chainring in front and a 10 speed cassette in the back. With my setup the bike reaches a top speed of 50 km an hour on a flat road. The great advantage of the mid-drive motor is the adjustable torque. Because the rear wheel is chain driven, the torque corresponds to the gear you are in. With a large 10 speed cassette in the back, I find the torque and the top speed to be just right for my needs. The 4 inch wide fat tires make the ride really enjoyable as it does not require any suspension on the bike to offer a smooth and comfy ride. The large surface area of the tires makes for a more stable ride and better grip on trails. The torque on this bike is just incredible. As it is rated for a 160 newton meters, it climbs up a hill with ease. The smaller the front chainring, the higher the torque you will get, but even with a 48 tooth chainring, I was able to climb up the steepest slopes I could find. Unlike the rear wheel hub motors, the mid-drive motor sits under the bottom bracket at the bike's center of mass so the e-bike feels more agile and easy to control without a heavy weight on the rear wheel. I really like the color LCD screen that comes with this kit. It is easily visible in direct sunlight and shows the speed, battery voltage, power and other parameters. I have set 7 pedal assist levels and a throttle that can operate separately from the pedal assist, giving me full power when needed. On this e-bike I've also installed a gear sensor which cuts off the power to the motor for a few seconds to increase the lifetime of the drivetrain. The small drawback of the mid-drive motor is that the component which will wear out the fastest is the chain, so having the gear sensor installed will be a big bonus to its lifetime. Adding to that, regular maintenance of the chain and gears is a must on a bike like this in order to stay away from replacing the chain and cassette often. For the range test I rode the bike at an average speed of around 35 km an hour, mostly using the throttle only. After 21 km the battery got down to 53 volts from 58 volts. While the LCD was still showing a full charge, it was around 60% of charge. After a short break and riding the bike for additional 25 km, the battery gauge dropped to a half and later completely cut out at 42 volts.
Using the battery app, I checked that the voltage of each cell was 3 volts and the total range shown on the screen was 54 kilometers. One more thing I'd like to point out is the LED headlight on this bike. For its size and price, it is amazing. Not only does it look great, but the beam is really bright and it has a nice beam cutoff, making it safe and indispensable for night riding. So how does my DIY e-bike compare to a store-bought one? Here I have a Himaway Cruiser, a powerful fat tire e-bike that I have tested over a few weeks. In addition to its impressive looking design, this bike offers great specs and performance. It has a large removable 48 volt battery with a capacity slightly bigger than mine at 840 watt hours. A powerful geared hub motor in the rear with cable disc brakes in the front and back. A basic but usable Shimano 7 speed drivetrain, a large LCD display with pedal assist modes and a throttle handle. The rear rack with a Himiway logo engraved for placing your bags adds a nice touch to the bike style and LED lights in the front and back provide a safer ride and a bit more visibility in the dark. With a top speed of 40 km an hour, the Himiway Cruiser can accelerate rather quickly and has plenty of torque for most cases. The geared hub motor in the back allows for a more comfortable ride since you don't have to constantly shift gears like on the mid-drive e-bike. The LCD is somewhat programmable so you can adjust the speed and power settings. The seating position makes it much nicer to cruise on longer distances but I would like to see a softer saddle on this bike. The cruiser does have a spring-loaded front suspension, but I don't find it working properly because even on trails it only softens the very harsh bumps in the road. The front suspension is definitely a welcome addition to the fat tire bike, but I feel like this is just extra weight for a bike with such tires. This e-bike definitely does not feel as stable off-roading as the mid-drive bike because of the heavy hub motor in the back and the cruiser seating position, but it's still a lot of fun to ride. In most cases, the torque from the geared hub motor is plenty and combined with the fat tires, it will be able to push you through most terrains with ease. For the range test, I charge the bike fully and keeping a speed of around 35 km an hour with pedal assist, I got a range of just under 50 km when I got a flashing battery symbol on the screen. After recharging the battery, I tested the range on full throttle, trying to keep the speed at 40 km an hour and got a range of just over 40 km. These results are pretty much the same as my DIY e-bike, but not surprising as the batteries are almost identical in capacity. So is the Hemingway Cruiser worth the 1300 US dollar price tag? I'd say yes, but compared to what you can build for the same amount, I'd go for the DIY e-bike. Even though it takes much more time, effort, tools and parts required to build your own, the greater capabilities and performance of the bike take the advantage for me. I was quite lucky to find a used fat tire bike in a rough shape for just 200 US dollars. So in total, the bike cost me around $1,110 to make, not including the tools. And after a few hundred kilometers, it just feels much more fun to ride the bike I built myself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next project.